econometrics texts on panel data analysis and multilevel modeling typically focus on two different approaches, the random effects approach and the fixed effects approach. Both of these approaches belong to the family of generalized least squares or GLS estimators because they involve applying normal regression analysis on a transformed data set. So what is the, uh, the, the problem that these techniques try to address? In a normal regression model, we have the predictors and the observed variables from the fixed part, and then we have the random part that only contains the error. In a regression model for cluster data, we also have unobserved heterogeneity. We have the unobserved term, which here is called AJ. The key question that these, when we start modeling this data is, what do we do with the AJ? Should it go into the fixed part or into the random part? And the answer to this question determines whether we go for fixed effects modeling or random effects modeling. In the random effects, in the fixed effects model, we estimate a specific value for each cluster. So AJ, the unobserved heterogeneity, is in the fixed part and only the error term belong, goes to the random part. This is sometimes called the dummy variable model because the easiest way to, uh, to uh, implement this approach, not the most efficient way, but easiest to understand is by adding a dummy variable for each cluster in the data. So if we have 20 observations consisting of five companies each observed five times, uh, four companies each observed five times, then we would add three dummies to the model and we would estimate a specific intercept for, for each company. So the first company is used as a reference and the intercept in the model is for for that company and the intercept for the other companies would be obtained by using summing the intercept and the dummy for that, that company. So estimate a specific value for the intercept for each company, that's the fixed effects strategy. The random effects model on the other hand puts the unobserved term into the random part. And here we refer to the unobserved term as uj because it's a random effect. We no longer estimate the specific value for each company. Instead, we just estimate how much these, how much the companies vary from one another without estimating any specific values for any particular company. The random effects assumption importantly, uh, approach importantly makes the random effects assumption that both uj and UI, uij are uncorrelated with it all axes. In the fixed effects approach, we just assume that this normal error term uij is uncorrelated with the axis, but um, the aj can be correlated with the axis here. So let's take a look at uh, how these techniques differ and how the techniques are actually calculated and when you should be using one over the other. There are, beyond these two techniques, there are also other techniques that you could apply, but these are two basic techniques that are fairly easy to understand. So the idea of random effects model is that we estimate one regression line. The fixed part gives like the overall mean of the data and then uh, we allow the observations to be clustered around the, the line. So for example, this cluster of green observations is always above the regression line. This cluster of blue observations is always below the regression line. In the fixed effects approach, we estimate a unique regression line for each cluster. So here uh, we have three different regression lines. They have the same slope but they have a different intercept because we again estimate a specific intercept for each, each case. And uh, we can see that the lines are parallel because they're constrained to be so, but they, they are vary in, in where they're drawn. In this case, the random effects assumption holds and the regression coefficient from this model and that model, the slope is about the same. When the random effects assumption doesn't hold, then there are random effects approach produces inconsistent and biased estimates for the within effect. But the fixed effects approach, which gives a unique regression line, will estimate the within effect consistently. So 
how does fixed effects estimation approach actually work? It's fairly easy to understand. The idea of a fixed effects approach is that we mean center, we group mean center all variables. So we subtract the group mean of x, each x from that x, we subtract the, the cluster mean or group mean of y from y, and then we run a normal OLS regression model to the transform data. Let's take a look at an example of how this is done. So our data consists of a few companies, each observed for four years, and we have two variables. We have male CEO indicating whether the CEO is a man or not, and then we have ROA, which is return on assets, our dependent variable. And we want to know whether our, the CEO gender predicts the ROA or explains ROA. So that's our original data. And to implement the GLS fixed effects approach, we first calculate the cluster mean. For We calculate cluster means for all these variables. So for the first case, all CEOs are, are women. So this is a zero male CEO. ROA 12% is the mean of, of these variables, these values. So this is the, the cluster mean for the of ROA for the first case. This is the cluster mean of ROA of, of these four observations that belong in the next case and so on. Then we run, uh, we cluster mean or group mean center the data by subtracting these group or cluster means from the original data and we get this kind of data. So now the ROA here has a, a mean of zero for each case. Male CEO has a mean of zero for, for uh, for each, each cluster as well. This demonstration also shows one important feature of GLS fixed effects approach. The GLS fixed effects approach assumes that all of these variables that we have, male C or an ROA, vary within cluster. And now we don't have any variation in the CEO gender within company. And when we cluster mean center the data, then all values for male CEO will be zeros. And this is a violation of the third assumption of regression analysis and regression model cannot be estimated. So importantly, the GLS fixed effects approach can't include variables that don't vary within groups. To include such variables, we can go for the GLS random effects approach. So let's take a look at what GLS random effects estimation does. Again, we have the fixed part and the random part, and now we assume that the error term, that the unobserved heterogeneity term uj is in the error random part and is uncorrelated with the predictors. This approach is similar to the fixed effects approach, except that instead of Cluster means centering all variables. We quasi mean center all variables. And uh, that means that we, we don't fully cluster mean centered variables, but we do so only partly. And then we apply normal OLS regression to the data. So let's take a look at what this uh, quasi mean centering means. And uh, I'm going to use a text by Woolridge as an example. So here is the equation for the GLS random effects estimator. And instead of subtracting the y bar, which is the cluster mean from y, we multiply the y bar with lambda and before we subtract it from, from, the, um, from the data. And the lambda varies between 0 and 1, which means that sometimes we fully cluster means enter the data, sometimes we don't cluster means enter the data at all if, if lambda goes to 0. This Equation also, if we play around it a bit, shows us that the GLS random effects estimator is the weighted average of the between regression and the within regression. The within regression is estimating a regression using cluster mean center data, which is what the GLS fixed effects approach does. And the between regression is the regression of cluster means on, on each other. The when the random effects assumption holds, the, the within and between effects are the same. So that's one way to understand the random effects assumption. And this is the key idea behind GLS random effects model estimates. So the idea is that when the uh, between effect and the within effect are the same, then we can estimate the within effect more precisely by borrowing information from the between effects rigorous.
In, in the fixed effects approach, we eliminate all, all these uh, between effects from the data by using the cluster mean centering. In GLS random effects modeling, we assume that the between effect is informative for estimating the within effect and we use that information to get more precise estimates. So uh, the idea is that the weighted average of the within, effect, within regression and between regression is more efficient than the within regression only. And this more efficiency or precision will is one of the advantages of GLS RE over GLS FE. Let's take a look at uh, the, uh, the lambda term a bit more and the different variance components. So in the lambda term, we have uh, the variance of the error term, uh, sigma u. Then we have the variance of unobserved effect or unobserved heterogeneity, sigma a. And then we have t, which th is the number of time points. And this is um, the, uh, the within variation divided by within variation plus t times between variation. And then we take a square root. So this kind of looks like an intra-class correlation, except that there is the, the extra t. So uh, when we look at these different components that go into the equation, we can make a couple of observations. So first, if there is <coughs> no clustering at all, GLS RE equals OLS. So when the lambda is estimated to be uh, zero, sorry, when there's, when there's no within cluster variation, then GLS RE will equal, equal normal OLS regression. When there is uh, no between cluster variation, sigma A is zero, then lambda goes to 1 and GLS RE equals GLS FE. So uh, the GLS random effects model is always somewhere between normal OLS regression model that ignores clustering and the GLS within effect model, G GLS fixed effects model. Importantly, when the number of observations or number of time points increases, then Lambda also approaches one, which means that GLS random effects approach goes, approaches GLS FE. So when there is a large number of observations, then uh, the efficiency difference between GLS RE and GLS FE starts to diminish because GLS RE approaches GLS FE. And uh, that's fairly intuitive because if you think that uh, the GLS FE also uses, uses only the within information, but GLS R uses between information. There, there are a number of between cluster differences that we have doesn't depend on the number of time points. But the number of time points determines how much information we have on how the cases vary over time. So uh, we get more information from, from the varying time points. That means that GLS FE becomes better and GLS RE then approaches GLS FE. So uh, which one of these techniques should you apply? There is, uh, before I go into this, uh, there, I must say that there are also other techniques that I explain in other videos that address the same problem that you could also consider. But normally in econometrics books, this is explained as a decision of between GLS FE and GLS RE. There are advantages of GLS FE is basically that it doesn't make the random effects assumption. But when the random effects assumption holds, it is less efficient than the random effects assumption. And also another major disadvantage is that the GLS fixed effects approach can be used with any variables that don't vary within clusters. The GLS random effects assumption has uh, two advantages. First, it can, be in, it can include variables that are constant within groups. So we can, for example, uh, use individual's gender as a predictor when we study something that uh, varies over time. It's also GLS FE RE is also efficient when random effects assumption holds. So the estimates are more precise. The major disadvantage of GLS random effects assumption uh, approach is that it makes the random effects assumption and it is inconsistent and biased if the random effects assumption doesn't hold. Fortunately, there are a couple of empirical tests that can be used for testing the random effects assumption. And in practice, people 
choose between these two approaches by performing one of these tests and then uh, going with GLS RE if the random effects assumption holds and going with the GLS FE if it doesn't. But there are also other alternatives that you could consider that I'll talk in other videos.